Good day, everyone, and welcome to the Data Science Essentials session in the Caribbean Girls in ICT 2023 day. And this session is for tertiary students and educators. And the Women in Data Science Trinidad and Tobago team is hosting. I am Dr. Leticia Addison, and I'm joined by my WIDS for short mentor, Ms. Shannon Ray Hackett. So two of us would take over the session today and give you some insights. Next slide. Right, so a little bit about us. Um, let's start off with me. Um, I am Dr. Leticia, as I said, you can call me Leticia. Uh, I have a PhD in mathematics and an MPhil in statistics from the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine campus. Um, I'm also a woman in data science ambassador um, for Trinidad and Tobago, as I mentioned, but uh, my day job is actually a project officer. Um, as most people ask me, what does that entail? For me, it's really a statistician because I do a lot of crunching of numbers um, with survey data and institutional data and also building some um, data science models for education. I'm also a lecturer. Um, I lecture in a few different departments um, at various campuses um, for over about 12 years um, in probability, statistics and, and mathematics. And you could tell by now I like math. So um, one of my taglines is that math is a universal language because we use it in everything in our everyday lives. And of course, statistics for me is really the story of our lives. And when I'm not doing all of this math and statistics, um, I like to do makeup. Um, I'm a makeup artist on the side and I like to knit and watch statistics, funny statistics memes. So that's a little bit um, about my background. Um, I will turn it over to Shannon Ray, and she will actually tell you a little bit about herself. For Shannon Ray. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So, as Odisha mentioned, my name is Shannon Ray, and I am a Wedge Trinidad and Tobago mentor. I'm also a data science intern as my job. And I like data analytics because it's an easy way to make a big impact. It's also very easy and accessible for anyone to get into because of the nature of the field. And one fun fact about me is that I love stories, whether that be books, Netflix series, or movies. Great. Well, thank you for telling us that, Shannon. We're really happy to hear. So at least hopefully um, you've gotten to know us a little bit. And what we want to do now is a little bit of an interactive portion to our icebreaker, which is what words come to mind when you think of data science. So we're going to drop a link in the chat, um, which is a Mentimeter link, and you can fill it out. Patino is also, the button is also there. So you can check the link in the chat and you can actually fill out whatever words, up to three words that you think of, and we will show the results live as we go along. So. Um, let's give you a couple minutes to do that. And if you want, you could also tell us in the chat as well. Feel free to chat with us. Um, it's really very uh, casual and interactive. So let us know if you would like to um, throw in any questions as we move along. So we will leave that link for you all, um, any of you who join as well to continue. And uh, um, Shannon Ray, we could, we could proceed and we will show you in a little while some of your answers in a really fancy looking word cloud. Right, so today we have three main things we want to cover in terms of data science, which is what, why, and how. So we're actually going to take each of these in segments. And as I said, you can feel free to interact with us in between. So let's start with the what is data science? So I'll turn you over to Shannon Ray to cover that portion. So before we actually get into what is data science, I quickly wanted to touch on what is data and the different types of data. 
So data can be split up into two main subsets, that being qualitative data and quantitative data. Quantitative data is what you probably more traditionally think of when thinking of data science. So it's discrete or continuous. So these are all numbers. And qualitative data is more descriptive and it can be nominal, meaning that there is no intrinsic order to the data. So that could be like gender, color, ethnicity as seen here. Or qualitative data can also be ordinal, meaning that there is a, some associated order with it. And another way to differentiate between different types of data is their use cases. So data can be used, well, data exists in all these different sectors, in the financial sector, in transport, in geography. So now that we know what is data, we can focus on what is data science. And to start off, we just have a short basic video just to introduce the topic to you guys. So as we saw in the video, data science combines math, statistics, and computer science. And data science can really be as basic as just some simple data analysis, or it can get really complicated when we think of artificial intelligence and machine learning. But the goal of data science is always to uncover actionable insights and to use these insights to guide decision making and to plan strategically. Um, so next, I wanted to quickly touch on the life cycle of a data science project. Typically, a data science project starts off with what we call the business understanding or domain knowledge. In data science, we're typically trying to solve a problem. And in order to solve this problem, it's essential for us to first understand what the problem is. So as data scientists, we tend to do a lot of research into whatever topic um, our data encompasses before going on to the more technical aspects of the project. After we understand our topic and our problem, we then go on to understand the data itself and prep the data in terms of cleaning it and shifting it into a format that's appropriate for what we want to do. Next, we use models such as machine learning models to model the data to make some sort of prediction or to gather some insights, and we then evaluate the model. So from steps three to five, preparing the data, modeling the data, and evaluating the data, we tend to repeat these steps until we have the best model that is the model that will give us the best results. And finally, we deploy the model and try to get some useful information from it. So next, I'm going to pass you back over to Leticia, and she's going to talk about some of the skills that are required of data scientists. Great. So thank you, Shannon Ray. 
Um, so now when you move from that life cycle, you want to think about, well, how do I get this done in the first place? So the skills that are required involves a really a intersection of a few different areas. You would notice that you have to have some mathematics and statistics background. So you must have some statistical knowledge um, of different modeling techniques. Um, of course, the basis is math, um, designing different methods, etc. And then you have to also think about computer science because we are in the ICT age. And of course, this is a girls in ICT uh, session. So you have to think about how do I use technology to get insights using the background that I have in terms of statistics and math. So no longer are you just a traditional statistician alone, but you'll actually be something of a computer scientist as well. And then you could see that you need also domain knowledge. So you cannot just divorce the business aspect or whatever technical problem that you're focusing on. And not only business, it can be in environment, it can be in education, finance, or anything else. You have to have a background of what the problem is because you can't just take the numbers and then come up with your own insights without having some sort of idea of what is, what is the actual story being told in that specific field. So you really need to have some... Um, insight into the requirements of whoever the client is to be able to move forward. Next slide. So if you really want to think about it now in a more um, specific sense or a granular sense, if I may, then how do we achieve um, the, the data science uh, methodology that we have to use we need to be able to employ specific tools. So there are a number of tools out there. We just have a few on the screen for some of you who may be familiar. I don't know if some of you, any of you are familiar with R. I know a lot of us are familiar with Excel and I will always say Excel is really um, one of the holy grails of data science in terms of spreadsheets um, because it's very easily um, integrated to in, into other um, more advanced programs as well. Um, there are bigger databases like SAS, um, I think most persons who have some sense of data science may who have heard of Python, but if you have not, it's really a programming language. So you really have to integrate that idea to be able to use some of these tools. MATLAB is another one, Tableau. And what you would notice is that some of them are what we call open source, or some of them may be licensed. So you would have to really choose which one is really to your preference for the specific problem that you're trying to solve. And that will help you to do whatever analysis and building, model building, statistical, um, machine learning, and those types of things. Um, and you would look, want to look into the graphical capabilities. For instance, I mean, the visuals themselves will also tell a story. So it's really to your preference and also not only to your preference, but also to the size of the data set you have. For instance, Excel may not be able to hold as much data or to analyze as much data as something like a larger program like MATLAB, for instance, right? Next slide. And then now this is a little more technical, so we don't want to scare people who don't know the background to this, but what this is really telling you is it's a snapshot of what it involves in terms of machine learning, because machine learning is part of data science. And the whole idea of machine learning is really, as it says, you're really learning from the data and you're learning the patterns and the trends to tell that story. So you can have different types of machine learning, which is what we call supervised learning, where you actually, you know, will have an idea of what the output would look like. So if you want to think about what supervised learning is in the real world, you could think of um, things like um, fraud detection, um, image classification, customer retention, and there are others. So they have different classification models, um, even things like weather forecasting. Uh, that's a very popular type of supervised learning model where you're actually learning from what happened before with the weather that happened, say, last year or last week, right? Market forecasting as well in the stock market, even population growth, which I have used in terms of a mathematical sense, um, in terms of modeling populations and seeing how those trends um, go, you know, change over time. And then you also have unsupervised learning, which is like you you know, the data itself, you have to find hidden patterns and make predictions. So what would that be? If any of you all have heard of recommender systems, I and mean, we'll probably touch on what that is in terms of real life, you know, um, you also have customer segmentation, which is a big one. And we will actually talk about that a little bit more when we talk about the how. 
And these are the types where you really have to look for those patterns because the data isn't as structured. And then there's also one called reinforcement. So you see you have these different types of machine learning that you can use um, as you go along. So as I said, it's more technical, but for persons who are interested, it's really nice for you to be able to look into it. Next slide. So coming out of the more technical aspect, in a broader sense now, the careers, because a lot of people want to know like what kind of career I can get. And I always say that it's not just the data scientists alone, because you would notice in this wheel of careers, you would see data scientists as one, but you use data science in a lot of other fields. So for instance, I'm a statistician by training and really and truly data science was really born out of statistics. So it's really like you would notice a data analyst as well would do similar things like um, analyzing the trends in the data, creating visuals. And you have the machine learning engineer who would do something more technical with those trends or actually give you the background um, programming to actually get those trends. And you could see in the wheel, you have different, you know, different facets of what a data scientist could look like in different fields, like a chief data officer, a chief technology officer, application architect, market research analyst. And there are many, many more. Next slide. So now we wanted to talk about how data science is used in terms of some of the applications in different fields. So I'm going to start us off by talking about data science applications in marketing. So as Leticia would have mentioned earlier, data science um, techniques such as clustering and decision trees can be used to segment groups of customers. And this is valuable because it allows companies to target specific people and hopefully get better results in terms of more sales and increased revenue. So if you've ever felt like you were talking about something one day and then the next day Amazon or Facebook or YouTube just happened to suggest to you exactly what you were talking about, it's probably it's more than likely one of these algorithms at root behind the scenes predicting what you would like to see. And so you can really see in this way how these algorithms predict patterns and similarities among customers and therefore recommend to them things that they think that they will enjoy. And so just to reiterate, some of the benefits of this uh, include improved customer satisfaction, increased customer loyalty, and higher sales and revenues. Right, and actually just adding to what Shannon re mentioned in terms of applications, you also have some really nice applications in education. And this um, is, I, I've given you a, a context from a more personalized lens since I've actually been working with education data in, in tertiary education to use data science techniques for student retention. So as you could see, what that looks like is that you really want to classify the students based on the predicted risk of dropout. And what that helps with is, for instance, early identification. So you would have different um, levels of data based on students, like their GPAs, um, their um, the different faculties they are from, all these different levels of student data. Um, you are actually able to run it in a model and get an idea of the predicted risk of dropout based on these specific variables. So it's significant or um, significant variables that are of interest we would actually be able to tell persons in administration, they can use that for early identification. And of course, what would that mean in terms of, as we were talking about before, the business aspect, in this case, education, why would they want that? Because they would want early intervention to be able to flag students and actually help them before they drop out of the system. And in that way, you have continuous improvement of the learning space of the education space. And it's really, um, as Shannon mentioned, you know, in customer segmentation, you have that customer satisfaction. You'll have a higher level of student satisfaction in education as you go along. So it really is a win-win a for both educators and students to have this level of knowledge and insights from data science. I'll give you a snapshot in the next slide so you can have an idea of what that looks like because most people, we hear about it, but I can give you it from my own perspective. This is what 
a snapshot of what uh, the prototype that we built looks like in terms of the different levels of some of the variables we would have incorporated. And uh, for some people it may look a little complicated, but the graphs just give you an idea of different levels of risk. There will be a, a certain number of students who have a low level of risk. Then you'll have certain who have a medium level of risk depending on um, these different wristbands. You could create different wristbands depending on um, if they are 80% likely to drop out, 40% likely to drop out, and you could have high dropout risk and you'll be able to see, for instance, in this graph here, we had a low level of dropout risk in this example for this specific um, set of students. So you'd be able to actually have those insights beforehand and have an average predictive risk rate for any specific faculty or, or different department. It can be done for secondary school as well. But remember, these are just to give insights. It's not to actually say they will drop out, but it's to actually help you to um, understand what will happen beforehand. Next slide. And then we also have it in climate change. I could also talk in the context of using data science techniques to um, classify the predicted risk of a natural disaster, for instance, floods in the OECS countries. And this is also a more personalized um, aspect in terms of um, I was working with a cross campus team. In 2022, we were able to secure the first place in the growth and resilience uh, dialogue, which is a um, a data challenge, um, a climate data challenge that was put on by the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. And in that challenge, we were able to build an AI application to be able to determine whether or not a flood will occur in a specific country in the OECS, which is really practical for us in this region because we see how the climate changes so quickly. Um, so in the next slide, I will show you just a snapshot of how that looks for people who are a little more technical and want to understand what that would look like. So in the user interface, this is what you would see, and you would actually see the different countries, and those circles would represent specific areas where you would be able to click on the country now and actually have like the frequencies of when these flood risks would occur, if it's large or smaller for specific countries, you'd be able to click on a temperature, um, rainfall, and of course you could roll this out in a larger way. So this is just a base model of how that looks from the, the user end. So you could actually give this to like, say, um, someone in disaster um, management um, or disaster risk preparedness, and they can have the tool to get certain insights as well. And that is how data science is really, really useful in this way um, to be able to give those higher level um, ideas to our policy makers so they can actually know where they can funnel funds to be able to assist and to really just make a difference and to help our communities. Next. So we come to now the why is data science used? So I wanted to throw this out. If anyone wants to um, let us know in the chat if they feel like you know data science is useful, um, how they feel like data science has been used. Um, we could just go back to the why. Um, so the why of it would be in terms of where you see it helping our world. So anybody wants to mention in the chat like where you see it coming into play, um, if there are any other applications, because there are many, many more applications that are very useful for data science to get those insights. And uh, we just want to also throw out to you the how of it. Um, basically, how can we use it in the Caribbean? I, I think I gave you all a couple contexts, um, but if there's anything else, if anyone wants to ask any questions, we could just throw it out to you now as to how do you think it can be used to help our region and specifically for girls and women coming up in the field, you know, I think it will be useful to start to think about that how, because in the Caribbean region, we have different uh, issues and some of them may rely on data driven insights to be able to help us to make decisions. So that's the last question here. Um, so I'll just ask anyone, anyone has any questions or any thing they want to add. This is the this is our reflective question for you based on how it can be used to shape the future. And that's a question that maybe even if you can't answer it now, it's something that you could take with you to think about and think about how you can use data science as well in your field. So it's really up to you now to determine if it's if it's something useful. In the meantime, while we wait, I know some of you may be a little shy, let's just talk a little bit about um, some of the women in data science resources. 
So for persons who are interested, I know some of the work could seem a little technical and we have people who may be beginner, intermediate, advanced levels. These are some of the resources. If you want to contact us, we uh, host a lot of different um, talks, webinars, workshops, and we have a few of them available on YouTube already. So this is the WIDS TT group at gmail.com and our YouTube website, you can actually go and see some of the videos that we have. We have a LinkedIn page as well. So this is our YouTube page. We have a few talks there already. We also have some applications in agriculture in the Caribbean. We have some a fireside chat that we would have spoken with data scientists, not only from Trinidad, but from around the world. So we'll place those links in the chat as well for you at WIDS TT is the handle for YouTube. And we are consistently growing our space. So we like to feature persons regionally as well. So any of the work in the Caribbean that involves data science, we, we love to feature persons talking about our work so we can actually help others to see what can be used. And in that way, um, it's really a very useful way for us to collaborate um, with each other. We are part of a global network. So we are part of the WIDS community at Stanford University. And we uh, also promote some of their international events as well. So in that way, as I said, it's a global network. It's a global space to elevate uh, um, and support others in the field. So you could feel free to follow us on YouTube and to also follow our page as well. I see we have a question in the chat. I am in the field of statistics. So I see data science as very useful to help improve the quality. Right, yeah, and the range of your office. So Marissa, can you tell us what, what um, you're in the field of statistics, so can you tell us more about what you do at your office? And maybe how it can be helpful? Glad to hear about this. And I just in the meantime, I just want to tell you all that in that way, data science, like I, I like that when you say, because for instance, I came out of a background of statistics um, theoretically, and in that I started to learn to use. So I am like a, a self, self-taught self data scientist, just like um, Shannon Ray, because you start in one field and then you sort of pick up other. And this is how we, this is, I, I also always want to tell people, it's not always about the formal training as well. You can do short courses. So we have some of these short courses as well, um, data thons, data challenges, our team was part, we had a few teams part of a data challenge. So once you have the background in statistics or computer science or anything, you can um, make a, a transition into data science if you want to be a data scientist. But if you want to use data science techniques, that is also possible. Uh, so you could look for short courses as well on your Coursera, edX, Udemy, um, Shan Ray and I and the rest of the team have used a lot of short courses. I don't know if Shan Ray, you want to talk about some resources that could help Marissa in her office as well? Um, yes, these are really good courses, Coursera in particular, there are lots of machine learning courses to look at. The very, very first course I ever did to learn about data science was on Coursera, the machine learning course by Andrew NG is very good yes. for anybody who wants to get into data science. Nice. Yes, exactly. Right. Yes, Marissa, you said, okay, great. So you looked at um, regional statistics. I like that. So yes, that's very, very applicable and to produce policy and exactly what you're saying is exactly what you really wanted for policy making and decision making. And yes, and you have different tools, for instance, um, did you use any specific software? Um, because these short, short courses, I mean, if anybody wants to go on Kaggle, Kaggle is a place where you could find a lot of more programming, but right, statistics at R, that, that speaks to me because I know Shannon Ray is more of the Python. Um, that's another programming language and I am more of the R person. Yes, I actually, I, I believe I would have done that course too. So yes, yes, Marissa, that's great. Anybody else in the chat, you all could always comment. Even if you have never done it before on an absolute beginner, that's fine because we cater to everyone. So we also have a lot of resources, Marissa. So if you want to reach out to us, you could always email us, right? And of course, Shannon Ray is also dropping a resource for you. So you could email us and we, um, we just drop any goods TT group at gmail.com and you could feel free to reach out to us if you want additional resources or support. Um, because that's really key there. We like to help each other and collaborate as well. So yeah, I would, I would write, yeah. So I would definitely recommend uh, Udemy also has some great courses as well, um, edX. So just keep learning, keep upskilling as they say, 
um, that is really the key to it. And I always say can't do it in isolation. Like you really do need to network with people. For me, that has been one of the most um, beneficial parts of this process is not just working in isolation, but also being part of a community where I could share ideas. And I think Shannon Ray could also talk about that as well. How it, you know, the experience being in a, a woman in data science community where we have each other to, to, to really rely on if we need to get context. So Shannon Ray, you want to talk about that experience to give, give them a little bit of an idea of how that, how that has been for us? Yeah, I would definitely recommend joining a group, whether it be ours or even like online ones on Kaggle. On Kaggle, you can join competitions and form a group with people all over the world. And especially as a self-taught person, this can really help because it will help to identify gaps in your learning because data science is such a vast topic. When you're trying to learn it yourself, it's very easy to overlook simple things. So learning from each other and really getting that interaction with other people and bouncing ideas off of them will really help you. Yes, I, I definitely agree. And I would say I also, before I became the Women in Data Science Ambassador, I was actually taking part in a, a, a Women in Data Science Data Challenge. And that was an eye-opening experience because then you start to realize, okay, maybe I need to know more of this area. Maybe I need to go and research this. Maybe I need to go and um, actually do a course here. So I think sometimes we probably afraid because we feel it's challenging. I always tell people make friends with your mistakes and challenges and see them as just something to, to tell you, um, to push you further and to motivate you. So it's really like, I, I would really like to see more of, um, you know, our, all our regional communities really build in this way. And as, as Shannon Ray mentioned, it's really easy to interact with not only regional persons, but international persons on Kaggle. And it's really very a, support, a very supportive community. There are a lot of forums. You could ask any questions. Nobody's going to, to find your question is too simple or too, too basic, right? Um, so it's really to just kind of build that community support. And I think in this digital age, especially with the way things are going so fast, it's really important to have, to have that. Um, so I'm just going to throw it again. This is an open floor now. So anyone else has any questions, any comments? Anybody could see themselves being a data scientist, um, be, um, being a data scientist or using data science, or is it something that you're far removed from? How do you feel? You could let us know. I think we have a few minutes again. So we'll just leave that there for you um, just to let us know um, and to share anything. Marissa, anything else that you would like to ask us? You could feel free. So just check in the chat to see if anyone has any comments. Right, so that is really it for our presentation today. Um, I'm hoping that you all um, enjoyed the session, knowing that it's just a bit of a touch of, a, you know, the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. If you really want to get more involved in what, you know, happens behind the scenes, you can actually check out our YouTube channel as well. And I see Marissa, yes, so you said you look at Kaggle, exactly. Yeah, it's just a continuous learning process, right? Um, and as I said, if you need any assistance from us, we are always here. So it's it's not a problem. You could feel free to reach out to us and we could actually help you with that. Um, so I, I think that's the end of the session from our end. So I'm just going to uh, stop recording here. And I would like to thank you. If you all have any questions, as I said, you could feel free to reach out to us. And we really want to thank you for joining us today. Um, really appreciate it. Shannon, any last words? Um, no, thank you everyone for joining us today and I hope that you learned a lot. Great, great. Thank you and take care and um, just reach out if you all need to.